When you sew a bomb shot, you increase your happiness level by 200%. And that will do 2023. And in this video, I'm going to show you guys the easiest way, the simplest way, and the fastest way to sew a jeans bomb shot. Trust me, guys, it is so simple and easy to sew. So I'm starting with my jean fabric on a fold. We are sewing a jeans bomb shot, so you need your jeans fabric, okay? So from the top, I marked one inch and I drew a straight line, okay? So you are going to mark one inch and you are going to draw a straight line. Mm? As we go into the tutorial, you see why I drew this one inch mark, okay? Now, from that point, I went downwards and i marked 13 inches for the length of this bomb shot if you want your own to be bomb bomb shot you can make it 10 inches if you now want to sew pint maybe you can make it smaller than that 8 inches 6 inches 7 inches i don't know so after marking 13 inches i went ahead to connect my markings with a straight line mm -hmm. Okay, so this is the length of the shots we are, the bomb shots we are working with. So from the middle, I also marked one inch and I connected my markings with a straight line as well. Now, this one inch mark is where we are going to start our measurement from. Do you understand? So from the top, I went down by nine inches and I marked my crouch length. If you don't know how to calculate your crouch length, your crouch curve, I have a detailed tutorial on this channel on how to do that. So just check the link in the description box or the comment section. Now from that line, I went ahead to mark my hips divided by four. Okay. You want to make sure you also add your my hips divided by four. Let me not confuse you. I marked my hips divided by four. My hips is 44. So divided by four, that is 11. So I connected the markings from my waistline to my crouch line. Okay. Now from that point, I want to create my crouch curve now. So I marked three inches for my crouch for the width of my crouch. Okay. And I just inserted my crouch curve. Okay. You can see how easy it is to just get your crouch length and your crouch curve. Now from the top, the next thing I went ahead to do was I marked 8 inches, which is like standard for our hip point, okay? So I marked 8 inches for my hip point and I used my ruler and I connected my markings together, okay? Okay. So this is my hemline, my crouch line, my hip line and my waistline, okay? Now from the hem, I went ahead to mark the circumference of my tie divided by two. So my tie is 26 inches divided by two, that is 13 inches. And I just connected my tie, my hemline to my crouch curve. Okay. Now I went to mark my waist point. I went ahead to mark eight inches for my waist. That's my waist divided by two. And from that point, I extended my measurement. Up, I, mean, I extended that line upwards okay i sent that line where i marked my waist upwards and i connected my waist to my hip point okay so i connected my waist to my hip point so from the middle i marked four inches which is where our dart normally sits that when we are having this our standard um maybe shorts or skirt and from that point i just curved it to the top you guys see why we marked this one inch initially when we started this um, shots okay this is why we marked that one inch at the top it will help us create this curve around the side seams okay so after that next thing i had to do was to add one inch sewing allowance by the side and guys this is basically what the front looks like now i want to insert the pocket curve okay where the pocket is going to sit and i went ahead to mark three and a half inches and at the side i marked three inches and i'm just going to connect it together so the width of this pocket is three and a half inches while the depth is three inches so after um, drawing the cup the pocket the shape of the pocket i just went ahead to cut out the front part of this bomb shot okay i went ahead to cut the front part of this bomb shot you want to make sure you include your sewing allowance because this this is not a pattern so you want to make sure you include your sewing allowance after doing that the next thing i went ahead to do was to cut of course cut out the 
the the outline for the pocket okay so now next thing i went ahead to do is i want to i want to cut the facing for the pocket because of course we are going to turn the 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 pocket over so you need a facing for it so i used a marker so you guys should see it very well okay and after drawing out the outline of the pocket i went ahead to mark to mark before i speak bad english to mark 1.5 inch for the width of the of the facing and next thing I went ahead to do was to cut out the facing. So we are just going to use this facing to turn over the pocket, okay? Because you're not going to leave it rough like that. Now for this part, because we, are, we have cut it out of the pocket, it will not fully lap the pocket anymore. So we need to cut another piece, okay? We need to cut another piece that is about half an inch or one inch bigger than this piece. So I worked with half an inch you might want to do three quarter of an inch but i worked with half an inch and it worked very well for me so i just traced the outline of this part and after tracing it the next thing i went ahead to do was to add half an inch on the sides you can see we are added half an inch the places where i added half an inch and after doing that the next thing i went ahead to do was i cut it out now the first piece we no longer need it because it's now too small to fit into the pocket so we are going to use this new piece and this is how we are going to place it when we are done turning over the the pocket okay just like this you can see it is well seated now mm? So this is what the front part looks like. We're going to go ahead to cut the back part. Mm? So for the back part, it's already on a fold. And for the back part, from the top, I marked three inches. Okay, the, the width, the length is three inches. That's for that top. And this side, you guys know we always do it at one inch. Okay, the distance there is one inch. So to start it, I've just transferred my the lines, that's my my hip line my hip line at 8 inches from the top to that point is 9 inches on my crouch line and of course the length of this bomb shot which is 13 inches just like we did for the front part okay so from my crouch line i went ahead to mark the width of my uh, my hips divided by four just like we did for the front part which is 11 inches so i marked 11 inches at my crouch line i also marked 11 inches at my waistline okay so after marking 11 inches at my crouch line and my waistline i used my ruler and i drew a straight line mm? i drew a straight line so after drawing a straight line i grabbed the next thing i did was I'm just showing you guys the line all over again okay so the next thing i did was i grabbed my front piece and i want to make sure that the lines you know they lap okay so i grabbed my front piece and i marked where my crouch curve stopped you guys know that the back part of our shot is always bigger because of the bomb so i just used the front part to trace out my crouch curve okay and i marked where the crouch curve stopped and from that point i added 1.5 inch to the crouch curve that's to the length of the crouch curve okay and i also did that at the hem of the shorts because we need more length to accommodate the bomb the bomb bomb okay the front and the back there's always a little difference because of the bomb so after doing that i drew a straight line not really a straight line a slatted line just to connect my markings together and i took the front part out okay and because of the bomb the the, the cover at the back is not exactly straight so from that point i went in by 1.5 inch okay and i drew from that point i drew a straight line upwards okay i drew a straight line upwards and the next thing i went ahead to do was i used my french curve to connect that point to my crouch line because of course you guys know that we have kind of adjusted where the crouch the crouch line is so i just drew it like this so this is what we have here this is our new crouch crouch curve crouch length crouch line anything you call it so from that point i went up by 1.5 inch and i'm doing this so that we'll have more allowance for the bone and from the, from the middle or from that point i also went ahead to mark my waist at eight inches so after marking my waist at eight inches i drew a straight line upwards you guys know that for the front part remember i went up by one inch 
at the sides that's where our side seam is meant to sit so that's what i'm also doing here for the back part and the next thing i went ahead to do was i connected the 1.5 inch mark to the one inch mark okay you can see beautiful <laughs> let me sound like nigerian presenters wonderful okay so from that point i connected my waistline to my hip line right you're following if you are following hit the like button hit the love button wherever you're watching from facebook instagram okay now from that point i went down by two inches because if you look at your if you look at your jean trouser there's always this cut at the back and this is sort of like sort of like a dart manipulation because it is a thick fabric so it's a thick fabric i want to kind of um we kind, want to kind of oh what a, mm, want to kind of make sure it relaxes along that region at the back okay so i went down by two inches and i just connected it to that line so i went ahead at the top there what i'm going doing now is i'm adding one cm sewing allowance okay because by the time we cut it and we sew it back it's going to jump eh so by the time we cut it there and sew it back it's going to jump so i'm adding one inch one cm sewing allowance okay so after doing that i went ahead to cut i was explaining something to you i said for the back we normally do this slanted cut around the bomb side to accommodate where the dart is meant to sit it's sort of like a dart manipulation to make sure that the back part of the trouser is relaxed because it doesn't have a dart because this is a jean trouser okay so after cutting it out this is what we have here now for the pocket i just did five by five five by for the length and five for the width and i have a perfect square here okay so the next thing i went ahead to do was just to cut it out okay now this fabric is on a fold this is two pieces of fabric it is not one because of course we are going to have two pockets okay so after cutting out all the all, all the unwanted fabric i folded the the uh, working piece into two and from the bottom i went up by half an inch because i want to create like a pocket curve you guys know that the pocket is not exactly square so i went up by half an inch and i just curved it in and that is what i'm cutting out right now okay so after cutting it out we have like sort of a rounded edge rounded curvy edge at the bottom for the pocket so if you open it up this is a pocket piece that we have so it's time to sew these shorts okay so starting starting with just showing you guys what the front part this is what the back part looks like and this is what the front part looks like okay so we have the front and the back part here so to start with the front part the first thing i went ahead to do is i'm going to turn over that that um, pocket um, side i'm going to turn it over with the facing now i'm not going to have like a pocket like an exact pocket in this short i just want to create that pocket side okay just like design you guys know some of our jean our jean pockets are closed it's not open so i'm creating like a closed pocket in this bomb shot so after sewing the facing to the pocket side i went ahead to under stitch okay we've been saying top stitch but i recently realized that under stitch is the right word for this particular one i'm doing so i went ahead to under stitch top and gave it a good press and this is what we have here guys so i've turned over the edges for the pocket so this piece i'm just going to grab it like this and i'm going to and next thing i went ahead to do was i made sure it lapped with the fabric you can see that i did not have any excess outside so after that after i made sure it lapped i secured with a pin the next thing i went ahead to do was to top stitch that top stitch it to the main piece with a golden thread okay you guys know that with jeans they always use like golden thread or brown thread so i top stitched it to the jeans and this is what we have here guys you can see how the back part looks like you guys see where we, why we added that half an inch you know to that part so that we can lap it very well and everything will be well and put together so i did this for the two the two pieces of the front part okay now we're just going to join the crouch curve for the front part so I went ahead to join the crouch curve for the front part as I already, I've already marked where I want my zip to be. Okay. So this is what we have here for the front part. Next thing I went ahead to do is I went ahead to open up the, 
the the seam okay you guys know that because we've sewn we have like a crease line that will help us attach the zip so that's my zip shield and my zip fly so i'm going to attach my zip to this short i have another detailed tutorial on how to attach a zip to a short or a trouser so you want to check that one out i will leave the link to this the video in the description box or the comment section so i've attached my zip to the shorts like i said i have a detailed tutorial for that and i also went ahead to top stitch okay i went ahead to top stitch with a golden thread sort of a golden brown thread now it's time for the back i'm done with the front so for the back part the first thing i went ahead to do was i placed that piece on like on this on the main piece like this and i went ahead to secure a pin and i just took over to my sewing machine and i joined it together so after joining it together you want to make sure you overlock that part so that it doesn't fray so after that the next thing i went ahead to do was i top stitched with another color which is like the brown color you want to do this from the front i initially tried from the back and it didn't really come out straight so i switched and started doing it from the front okay so i went ahead to top stitch two lines on the front just like what we see on our normal jean trousers or jean skirt or jean short so this is what it looks like guys this is the first piece i went ahead to do this for the two pieces of the back part okay so now i placed the two pieces of the back part together like this and the next thing i went ahead to do is i went ahead to join it around the crouch curve see guys i will soon bite my mouth with this crouch curve i'm saying so i went ahead to join it along that side okay and after joining it i'm also going to top stitch just like what we, we've been doing since we started this tutorial okay so if you have watched up to this point eh, and you're enjoying this video make sure you like this video make sure you subscribe if you're watching from youtube subscribe if you're watching from facebook make sure you drop a comment okay so after joining like i told you i also flipped it to the front and i top stitched okay i top stitched it you're going to give it two stitches mm? just like we see on our normal jean trousers so after top stitching this is what we have here oh more this thing is beautiful okay now so from the middle i marked four inches which is where our dart normally you know where it normally stays and i kept i tried to keep my ruler straight and i just drew a straight line okay now from that point you can see where i placed my tape you're going to come down by two inches so i came down by two inches and i drew a straight line now the reason why i'm drawing this is because we want to know where our pocket is going to be okay so i drew a straight and i did this for both parts of the of the back part of um, the bum short okay and this is my pocket piece mm? so for the pocket piece i've gone ahead to mark one cm on all sides but at the top where we're going to fold i came down by half an inch okay so on the sides i drew one cm okay i just drew one cm and from that top huh, i came down by half an inch which is what i'm trying to explain with my plenty hand i came down by half an inch at the top but on the other side i the i drew i came in by one cm so i'm just going to take this over and i'm going to iron all my folds okay so i ironed it so that it would be in place before i sew it so after ironing it next thing i had to do was just to sew the top part okay and i'm going to do this for the two pieces of the pocket so i'm going to sew the top part so after sewing the top part i did this for both pieces mm? you can do two lines if you want but me i did one line mm? so after sewing the top part i'm going to get the middle of the pocket just by folding it into two and marking the middle and i just used my pin to secure it to the short okay with the aid or with the help of that line that we have drawn just like we always say in our scientific classes yeah so next thing i went ahead to do was to attach the pocket to the shorts with two lines and i'm just i just followed the outline of the shape of the pocket to attach it to the shorts okay so after attaching it this is what we have here guys or more it is at this point i fell in, in love with these shorts or more Welcome to my studio. 
Okay, so after attaching the pocket to the back part of the shirt, the next thing I went ahead to do is I place the front part of this bomb shirt on the back part and I'm just going to attach the crouch, the crouches, the crouch curves together. And next thing I went ahead to do was to join it at the crouch curve. After joining that the crouch curve, I top stitched it as well, just as we've been doing since we started this tutorial. Mm? I top stitched it. Mm? So after top stitching, I flipped it over and from the back, I marked my measurement. Okay. So I marked my measurement around the hem. I went in instead of by one inch because I added one inch sewing allowance. I went in by 1.5 inch because I wanted it to be a little firm. You understand? I wanted it to be a little tapered. Let me not firm. A little pencil. Not so much pencil, but a little. Yeah. So after doing that, next thing I went ahead to do was I joined the side seam. You will see that I remarked my waist measurement. You can see two lines there. That is because I just decided to verify my waist measurement again and I realized that I've lost one inch. That is the reason why I quickly went to go and readjust my waist because it's not easy to lose one inch. Okay. I'm happy. Kumbaya, my people. <laughs> so next you want to do after cutting that excess, you want to make sure you weave or you overlock so that it doesn't fray. Okay. Now, the next thing I went ahead to do was to attach my band. The width of this band is two and a half inches. You can make yours bigger. So this is two and a half inches and I went ahead to iron it. Eh? I went ahead to iron it so that it, it, it's on a fold. So to attach it to the waistline, I just um, opened it up and attached it to the waistline just as you can see here. Okay. So after attaching it, you can see that I'm just attaching it like joining it with stitches. I'm going to flip it like this. Eh? And I'm going to sew that part. Hmm? I'm going to sew that part. So I took it back to my sewing machine, flipped it over, and I joined that part. So after doing that, I went ahead to just turn it in. Hmm? Very simple, guys. There are different ways to attach your band. This is just my own way of attaching my band. So to to finish up the band, what I went, what next I went ahead to do was. I'm just going to fold it in like this. I don't know how to explain this thing to you in English. So just look at what I'm doing. I'm going to push the seam in. That's push the seam upward. You're going to fold the band and you are going to under stitch because people have warned me that it's not top stitch anymore. But just pardon me. You're going to top stitch. Mm? Pardon me this one time. So you're going to fold it like that and you're going to top stitch, mm? which is what I did. So after top stitching, you can see how neat or more beauty. <laughs> you can see how neat it looks. You want to do it carefully. Don't be so fast. Me, I did my own small, small because this race in this life is heavenly race and singly. I'm not running to anywhere. Mm -hmm. So after top stitching, this is what we have for the waist. Now let's go over to the turn up because this bomb shot has a turn up going on. So the width of this fabric, it, of this band is three inches. And of course we're going to fold it into two. Okay. So on the right side of the fabric, because we are doing the turn up with the wrong side of the fabric. So on the right side of the fabric, I just mark the circumference of my tie. Okay. I mark the circumference of my tie and I drew a straight line from the top to the bottom of the band. I did this for both pieces and I took it back to my sewing machine and I just joined the pieces together. So after joining the pieces together, you see that excess you do, you are not going to use for anything. Cut it away the way you are going to cut off bad friends. Okay. Cut it away, which is what I did. So after cutting it away, I'm going to open. I opened that point and I gave it a good press. And I also folded the the band into two and I gave it a good press. Okay. So I did this for both pieces of the band. Okay. So after giving it a good press, you can see it's well relaxed. I went ahead to sew the band so that it is in place. It's not moving around when I want to attach it to the shirt. So this is what we have here. The front piece, the two pieces for the two legs. Okay, now to attach the band, the turn up. I, I I keep calling it band. To attach the turn up, you are going to put it into the shorts like this. You want to make sure that that part you joined, it's on the side seam. That place where the that place you joined around the turn up, you are going to merge it with the line on the side seam. Okay, so I'm just going to join it like this. Okay, so I took it to my sewing machine and I just ran straight stitches. Mm? 
I ran straight stitches to join the turn up fabric or the turn up band. I don't know why I keep calling it band, but you guys understand what I'm saying. Okay, yeah, so I joined it to the shorts. After joining it, I top stitch on the shorts, not on the band. Eh? I top stitch on the shorts. Okay, I'll be on that stitch anyone. You guys understand what I'm saying. And I went ahead to attach my button to the waist. Okay, attach my button to the waist. And guys, this is the shorts. Ha! Even when I showed my husband, it was like, wow, it's beautiful. This is the short. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you give this video a thumbs up. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you're watching from YouTube. If you're watching from Facebook, don't forget to give this video a like. Do watch my other videos. I have a whole playlist of trousers and shorts. So if you have any issues with that, I got you, okay? I'll see you in my next video. Bye, guys.